Models and Theories of Undue Influence, basically I'm going to describe for you and give you the tools to understand how manipulation works. When you go into a new church and you want to find out whether you want to attend there, what's the first thing a good Christian, good Berean does? They go over and they pull the doctrinal statement. You are only getting a very small amount of information with this because there are written rules and there are unwritten rules in a group. Complementarianism is generally one of the unwritten rules. The church I attended, had they come out and told me, women cannot teach, um, women cannot speak the word in power because it's not womanly, uh, we would have turned and we would have run. We would have run from that place. But it wasn't revealed to us uh, directly. We were not given informed consent about the beliefs of the group. So you have to observe how a group behaves. Paul said, I'll show you my faith by my works. And we need to look for that as Christians. Now, I also, I do not have time to give this subject justice. And there's a video on my uh, blog by Dr. Philip Zimbardo. He is a social psychologist. And he talks about the, I think every Christian should review his material. He's written a book called The Lucifer Effect. Why, why good people do bad things. And um, basically the system that's set up and the system within that people function within basically predisposes them to be evil. And I believe complementarianism does that very well, unfortunately. <laughs> but he talks about social proof and pressure. And these are very potent and powerful things for anyone, even a Christian. And we know the word of God, but we are, are also human beings and we can be influenced. Um, you know, the camaraderie we have here today, the worshiping together, it is a, a potent, powerful thing. And this comes into play and he reviews that. So I'm going to refer you to him for that and it is a huge topic. If you go to a car dealer and you're looking around and you like the cars, and the salesman comes up to you, what do they want you to do? They want you to give them your phone number and they want you to get in the car and test drive the car. Why? They know that if you touch that product or if they can secure your behavioral compliance, they've almost been guaranteed to sell you a car. And if you don't buy it from him, you'll probably buy it from somebody else very soon because behavior influences us. All right, on the next, uh, now Steve also adds in here, Steve Hassan, he adds information into this. And he's, because we base our thoughts, emotions, and behavior on information, if you can control the information a person receives, this is as powerful as controlling the emotion, the thought, or behavior. Now, Spiritual abuse is another way of looking at this. I'm just going to tell you a couple of different ways to look at some of these behaviors that are really just the same, as if I'm giving you different languages to describe the same thing. It's manipulation. Uh, the first um, factor that, and criterion that um, Hanke points out is authoritarianism. Um, there's too much in emphasis on authority and hierarchy, and I don't probably need to say too much about that in regards to complementarianism. It's all about hierarchy, and without it, there is no complementarianism. It's image conscious. People are called to do certain things, and this is true of any kind of cult or any kind of group. They'll do strange things. Um, an extreme example, Hare Krishnas and Buddhists will run around wearing sherbet colored garb and shaving their heads. They're doing this to demonstrate their special status before God. And Christians do it too through behaviors. If you do these things, it's, it really proves more to the person that they have elite status before God. And, but the group believes that they're being a witness and showing their holiness and their special status. Um, suppressing criticism, well, I know all too much about that myself. I was told uh, I had no right to say anything about certain esteemed professors at uh, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and some of their teachings because I don't, I'm not sure why. I just had no right to say anything. Um, 
I was called, uh, I was contacted by uh, someone in the media, and they said, well, what gives you the right to evaluate their teachings? And I said, well, I have been to seminary. I, I do have a master's degree. I'm not ordained, but, um, well, I'll tell you what. I'm a blood-bought child of the Lamb. I'm a Berean. And out of the mouths of babes and sucklings has the Lord ordained strength and perfected praise. We're called to speak the word of God. Who am I? I'm a Berean. I'm a student of the word of God. So... <laughs> the next thing that uh, Hanke points out is perfectionism. Um, people are called to almost uh, impossible performance standards. In complementarianism, women are called to live up to a standard that I think is unrealistic, and it's very shame-based. Uh, you, you, it's all about conformity, and it's, but it's based about on perfectionism. And the last thing that Hanke points out is un, he says that they're unbalanced. They, and he describes this as that groups generally focus on minor doctrines instead of the essentials of the faith. And in complementarianism, it, they're consumed with gender and sex instead of soteriology, the, the study of our Savior or redemption or even just, you know, proper behavior and love for one another, submitting to one another, or proper behavior as Christians to love one another.